So you join me outside the Liverpool College of Art. This of course was where Stuart Sutcliffe was enrolled in 1956. And today we're going to celebrate Stuart's birthday as a quick look at where he lived in and around Liverpool. So this is Canning Street and one of the flats that Stuart and Rod Murray shared was uh, right here in the middle, it's at 83 Canning Street. And they had a basement flat here for a short time. He also lived at number 12 Canning Street, we'll see that one as well. But this is part of what's known as the Georgian Quarter. He's a lot more grand than uh, when Stuart and Rod were living here. But you can imagine this back in the early 19th century. This is where the people with the money lived. So still on Canning Street, just near the cathedral, and Stuart and Rod shared a flat right in the attic. On top there on number 12 Canning Street. It's a great place where they could set up all their canvases and do all their artwork. Again, it's not far at all from where the art college is, which is just down there. Having spent their time in Canning Street, they got a much nicer place, which was in Percy Street. So number nine Percy Street, just over here. So again, it's still part of what we call the Georgian Quarter. It's got a Scottish feel to it, which is great for Stuart because he was born in Edinburgh. Um, and these were Scottish builders who created these, so they've got that slightly different look to it. The other buildings and the streets around here. But this was Nine Percy Street, and the important place really for Rod and Stuart, but then for John, Paul and George, they would visit here on quite a few occasions. And it was in here that John, Paul and George said to Rod and to Stuart, I'll tell you what, why don't one of you buy a bass guitar and then you can join the group we're putting together. Well, neither of them could afford that. And so Rod started making one, which only got so far. And of course, Stuart, what he did was exhibited a painting in the John Moores exhibition that was purchased by John Moores, gave him the money to buy a bass guitar. This became the place to be. What Stuart would do is uh, when he had a girlfriend, he would paint their portraits. When that relationship finished and he moved on to another girl, he'd paint over the original one. How romantic. So they were here for a little while, but they sort of decided to escape and they went round the corner to Gambia Terrace, which is probably the most famous of the flats uh, Stuart lived in. But not a good idea because just being round the corner, the landlady from Percy Street came round to find them because what they'd been doing was cutting up and burning the furniture to keep themselves warm in the fire. So of course they had to repay her, she was not impressed. So now we'll go round the corner to Gambia Terrace and we'll see where Stuart and John lived. So this is Canning Street, so Stuart and Rod lived further up there at 12 and 83. And the road just on our right, the first one there is Percy Street. So then Stuart and Rod just walked down Canning Street. And down there is the art college. And that's why they wanted to live in this area, because it was close to the college. In the shadow of Liverpool's Anglican Cathedral. Now, although this looks old, this was only completed in 1978. So when John and Stuart were living at Gambia Terrace, they were seeing this cathedral under construction. So this in here is Gambia Terrace. Now the actual address that Rod and Stuart lived at was number three Hillary Mansions, give it its proper title, which is just down here. So Rod and Stuart moved in here, a couple of girls from the art college, Diz and Ducky moved in, and then of course John Lennon moved in, gave him somewhere for a bit of privacy with Cynthia. And this just became the hangout for the Silver Beetles. So here is number three. And the lads had their flat just up there. Now you may have seen uh, some photos from 1960, one of Alan Williams's great ideas. 
which was to have a national newspaper show how the beatnik generation lived but the place just was trashed uh, so it was not a great idea same with a lot of alan's ideas unfortunately uh, a little garden outside which has been paid for and has been planted in Stuart's memory which not many people realize but it was a really important place so the silver beetles as they were first named they used to practice in here when they were trying to get rid of the quarrymen name and think oh what do we call ourselves but Stuart suggested beetles because beetles was like crickets and Buddy Holly and crickets were of course their heroes there's also the story of the man on the flaming pie. Look out for that one in, in a future video, and I'll tell you all about that. So Gambi Terrace, this was ideal. They could get up and just mosey on down to the art college. And John Lennon, as we know, with his song, I'm Only Sleeping, he was, as well as being quite inherently lazy, um, didn't like getting up in the morning. So even though he had the short walk from his flat here to go just down to the art college he would still be late no surprise but that's why the lads like this area because the houses were great now um, as I mentioned this wasn't the most attractive area at the time and not far from here was the local red light district not that that would have mattered but of course they went from one red light district to another and they went to Hamburg and if they thought this was a red light district well I was nothing compared to what they discovered in uh, in Hamburg so this magnificent building just coming up this was the Liverpool College of Art so this is where Stuart Stockton and Rod Murray met on the first day that's how they started uh, becoming friends and of course this is where John then met Stuart and they became best mates of course they gave all that up to go to Hamburg which I suppose they thought was the right thing to do and in hindsight certainly for the Beatles it was because Hamburg's what made them if you want to know uh, more about Stuart's time in Hamburg and of course his uh, untimely death don't forget to check out our other video on that but let's leave this one on a nice positive as happy memories of Stuart Sutcliffe and the Beatles <laughs>